I am back with another high yield question. Let's dive right in. A 29 year old woman presents to the clinic with complaints of frequent and sudden urges to urinate, often resulting in involuntary leakage of urine. She reports that the urgency usually occurs when she is unable to reach the bathroom in time, and she experiences these episodes multiple times a day. The urges are unrelated to coughing, sneezing, or laughing. The patient also mentions that she has had episodes of double vision, tingling in her left hand, and difficulty with coordinating her right leg over the past several months. She has had intermittent episodes of numbness and weakness in various parts of her body that have resolved over time. She is seeing a neurologist for these symptoms. Which of the following initial treatments is indicated for the patient's urinary symptoms? A. Mirabegron B. Oxybutynin C. Bethanicol D. Tamsulosin or E. Kegel exercises Pause the video if you want to think about this. And here we go with the correct answer. The correct answer is choice B, oxybutynin. Now what we are dealing with in this question is urge incontinence and specific to this question, I'm giving you the hint that the patient has underlying multiple sclerosis. So let's look at this vignette. I've highlighted things in a few different colors and I'll point out what these different colored sentences or colored words tell you. So first and foremost, I'm giving you a 29 year old female and I actually didn't highlight that, but again, I want you to understand that if somebody's going to have multiple sclerosis, they're going to be a female very likely of reproductive age. Now let's look further. Urges to urinate. So I'm telling you right off the bat that this is urge incontinence. I'm throwing you a bone here because I'm literally using the word urge. And this isn't just me being friendly when I write this practice question. This is how it shows up on USMLE and Comlex. They literally use the word urge. Now let's look at that green text. It's unrelated to coughing, sneezing, or laughing. And by me giving you this information, I'm essentially ruling out stress incontinence. And that's important because the treatment for stress incontinence, as you'll see in a few slides, is different than the treatment for urge incontinence. So stress incontinence can be ruled out because this is not due pathophysiologically to increased intra-abdominal pressure from something like coughing or laughing or sneezing. And then in blue here, I give you a couple sentences which essentially describe the course of multiple sclerosis. So I'm giving you all of those neurological symptoms that resolve over time and then I even tell you that the patient is seeing a neurologist. So I'm implying very intentionally that this patient has underlying multiple sclerosis. And so when you put all of this together, the fact that it's not consistent with stress incontinence, the fact that the patient has underlying multiple sclerosis, the, the fact that I said urge to urinate and that I gave you her age, you need to conclude that this is urge incontinence. And in this case, it's urge incontinence due to multiple sclerosis. So very, very important. But before we get to the associations between the different types of incontinence and the potential underlying medical disease that the person could have, let's look at the other potential answer choices and see if we can eliminate what's not correct. So choice A, Mira Begron. Let me say that I'm kind of a jerk for including this as a potential answer. Because to be honest with you, Mira Begron is a treatment of urge incontinence. But on USMLE and Comlex, it is not the initial treatment. And that's because Mirabegron is a lot more expensive than oxybutynin, which is generic and relatively speaking is very cheap. So Mirabegron, well, yes, that is a correct answer in terms of can it be used to treat urge incontinence. It's not going to be your initial treatment of choice. It's your secondary treatment of choice due to its being cost prohibitive. As a general feature, as a general principle, on USMLE and Comlex, you want to choose the non-controversial, low-cost answer choice unless there is, for sure, a 100% correct answer. And just know from your background, specifically, this is a beta-3 agonist. But on your exam, oxybutynin will be the correct answer. If this question didn't say, which of the following is the initial treatment, if it just said what, which of the following can treat this patient's urinary symptoms, and I took oxybutynin out of the potential answers but left Mirabegron in, then you could choose answer choice A. 
Answer choice C, bethanicol. So bethanicol is actually a treatment for overflow incontinence. And on your exam, the risk factor or the association for overflow incontinence will be due to either diabetes mellitus or BPH. Now recall that in overflow incontinence, the problem is that as the name implies, their bladder overflows. There's that increased post void uh, residual. And so what we want to do in overflow incontinence is encourage the patient to urinate because they're not going enough or they're not going in time. And so bethanicol is actually an agonist at the muscarinic receptor. This is the opposite mechanism of what oxybutynin is, which is an antagonist at the muscarinic receptor. And so when we give somebody an agonist at the muscarinic receptor, that's going to stimulate the detrusor. It's going to help the person urinate. Again, all of that is the opposite of what you want to do in urge incontinence, where you want to give somebody oxybutynin. Again, oxybutynin is an antagonist meaning blocking the muscarinic receptor. And when we do that, that's going to decrease the detrusor in the bladder, or of the bladder, I should say, which is going to help the person urinate less and have less urges. Answer choice D, tamsulosin. This is a distractor. This is a treatment of choice for BPH, so you can kind of throw that out. And then answer choice E, Kegel exercises. So this is why I had to tell you in the vignette that it's not the patient's urinary symptoms are not related to increased intra-abdominal pressure from sneezing, coughing, and laughing. If the patient has stress incontinence, then the first initial treatment is Kegel exercises, and then this is more of a point for USMLE Comlex um, level two, step two. If the Kegel exercises don't improve the stress incontinence, then the answer choice is a quote, mid urethral sling. So that's really important to know for stress incontinence. In stress incontinence, the association, and there, more on this on the next slide, but the association for stress incontinence is going to be a woman with a history of multi-parity, meaning they've given birth a lot of times, and over time, all of that stress on the anatomy causes the pelvic floor muscles to be relatively weakened, and that's what leads to stress incontinence. So when the patient laughs or sneezes or coughs, bears down, exerts increased intra-abdominal pressure, a little bit of urine can come out. And obviously that's why Kegel exercises is the treatment of choice. You wanna just re-strengthen those muscles. Um, and while we're talking about it, high yield to know, what are the muscles that we're strengthening? Pause the video if you wanna think about that for a second. The answer is pubococcygeus, external urethral sphincter, and levator ani. Those are the three big muscles that you wanna strengthen. All right, and then let's just wrap up by looking at a summary slide here. So if you're taking USMLE or Comlex, you want to know the associations between the different types of incontinence and the underlying diseases or risk factors, et cetera. So I've already mentioned most of this, but let's just fly through this slide real quick. Urge incontinence, is gonna be multiple sclerosis as you saw in this question, but it could also be Parkinson's disease. That's another big one. You, you basically, the mechanism here is that the um, detrusor is either not working, hyperactive or unstable. And so in the case of multiple sclerosis or other similar neurologic disease, you're losing control of the detrusor. In stress incontinence, we already talked about this. The big risk factor is a multi um woman who's given birth many, many times and the pelvic floor muscles have lost their integrity. Overflow incontinence, again, we also talked about this, diabetes, BPH. Those are your two big ones to know and look out for on USMLE and Comlex. As it relates to diabetes specifically, the reason is that one of the major complications of diabetes is neurogenic bladder, and that's what causes the overflow incontinence. And then in the case of BPH, um, if it's not already obvious, the outlet is essentially obstructed, which leads to that increase, increased post void residual. And I didn't talk about this at all, but there is another category of incontinence that has been showing up more often, and that's functional incontinence. Just really briefly, functional incontinence essentially refers to the inability of the patient to get to or find the bathroom in time. And so the major risk factors for functional incontinence are things like dementia, right? Alzheimer's and um, conditions where the patient is unable to get to the bathroom because they're not, they don't have the neurocognitive capabilities to recognize that they need to use the restroom. Likewise, a history of mental illness, 
is a big risk factor and homelessness. So look out for that on your exam. I've seen that showing up a little bit more often, but these are the associations that you want to know. Best of luck. Keep crushing it.